What's up, guys? Uh, being in the quarantine has kind of motivated me to um, go dig through all of my old drawings and stuff that I made in like elementary school stuff when I was super, super young. Uh, and if you're anything like me when you're a kid, you probably had an overactive imagination just as I did. Um, so today we're going to kind of look through all these old uh, drawings, or at least some of them, because they are there is a ton of them. Um, like, actually, they're there's like a literal metric ton. Let me show you real quick. Uh, yeah, basically that much. So yeah, let's just get right into digging through all this stuff and choosing one that I want to recreate in my art style today. All right, so we're gonna look through all my uh, old stuff. So when I was in elementary school, uh, I really wanted to write like a whole fantasy book uh, with all these drawings. So I drew this whole world uh, and like a bunch of different like creatures and artifacts and stuff. So we're going to be uh, looking through a few of these uh, and then choosing one to redo. Uh, and I'll probably do multiple for these for different videos. But uh, yeah, so this is the, uh, the map that we're going to start off with. So I originally called it Ponderia, uh, like it has all these floating islands and uh, it was obsessed with like endless stuff. So this mountain that comes up uh, is endless and uh, underground cities and, and everything. Uh, not, not, it's actually honestly not, not all that bad. <laughs> this is, so this is actually the original, original drawing. I, this is the first drawing that I did, uh, and then I redid it, trying to make it look a little more uh, high quality. Uh, so yeah, here's some of the, the creatures. Uh, I would just plug in like random Latin roots uh, into like random words into Google Translate and <laughs> translate them into Latin, uh, and then just kind of write that down as the names of the, the things. This thing is a, a lignum. It's just a giant tree. I'm sure tree, lignum is just tree in, in Latin or something. Uh, you kind of keep looking through. <laughs> I named this giant snake Longe. Uh, werewolf was, was lupus, obviously. <laughs> this, this one's just called Mean, because I was very creative. Um, yeah, a bunch of this thing on the... Twiddle pop that I think like was supposed to pop uh, if it gets scared by something. Uh, umbra sphere. I really like the word umbra for some reason. Uh, I just had to do like shadow stuff. Uh, it's like a little petrifying dude. Um, eye bug. <laughs> I literally named it an eye bug. What a great uh, fantasy thing. Uh, this character is supposed to be. I remember it was supposed to be the uh, the main villain and when I like of the, the the one book that I was that I was writing and when I was in elementary school I actually got like 30 pages into writing a book which is I mean for an elementary school kid that's like that's kind of crazy but I'm sure it was garbage <laughs> so anyways yeah just a bunch of random kings king's knight uh, I was very inspired by a book series called The Edge Chronicles. If you've never heard of that, then you should look that up. Um, King Kane. <laughs> so this buck teeth dude. Uh, and then <laughs> this is Queen Kane. She just, she's just wearing like a normal sweater. And she's really fat for some reason. Um, this thing uh, is like directly kind of influence from the edge it's called the shield cron i guess all my names are really weird um but uh this is based off the gloam glozer from uh the edge chronicles that's that's mu as much as i know so this one right here is going to be our lucky winner uh <laughs> the pissed kiss kind of like a fish i don't know monster thing that uh looks like it was a lot like a ben 10 <laughs> alien because i was obsessed with that too when i was a kid um so yeah, let's, let's see what we can do with this one. All right, so here's a little um, kind of recreation that I made of the 
uh, drawing. Uh, I just redrew it in Photoshop so we can get like a clearer little look at it. So this is going to be our starting point. So now uh, let's get into the time lapse of what I did. All right, so I'm going to start off here by just blocking in a little background to start the sketch on. Uh, and then my idea for this was to kind of just make this standard uh, humanoid kind of uh, fish man type thing. Kind of like if you take the, you know, fish creature from Shape of Water, um, but then mix it with an angler fish because it has a little um, Rip Jaws style uh, light, bioluminescent light that's hanging off uh, in front of its head. Uh, I just wanted to create basically just a, a fish man angler fish type guy. He actually ends up looking a lot like Rip Jaws <laughs> from <laughs> Bed Ted, so maybe the influence of that show is never gonna leave my uh, artistic vision. Um, so here I'm just sketching, and I, I spent a lot of time on this sketch to try to make sure I got all the proportions right, uh, make sure I get all the uh, anatomy and everything before going in to add the details. Uh, this painting in, in total uh, took took almost exactly seven hours, um, so this is being sped up by over two thousand uh, percent, which is kind of crazy. Um, but yeah, I just uh, go try to get as detailed as possible in like the most important spots of of this sketch, with um, namely his his face uh, and the little lights, uh, his hands, uh, parts of his feet. The most kind of unique, because the rest of it is kind of just scaly torso um i actually quite like how his hands came out uh in this drawing because i mean you know everybody always there they'll say that the hardest thing that they like their hardest thing to draw is always hands So yeah, here I added in little kind of fins going from under his arms over to the middle of his torso. Almost like uh, if you've ever seen those really old Spider-Man comics from when Spider-Man first um, was written into, first first kind of came about. He had these uh, kind of wingsuit type things made out of webbing under his arm. So I was kind of making something like that, but with a uh, fish webbing instead of spider webs. Um, uh, yeah, adding some kind of spindly little fins to his uh, shoulders, or not his shoulders, his elbows too, to kind of try to give him a little more, spice him up a little, and drawing little uh, barnacle areas kind of on him, but then I decide later to make it so that they're like glowing barnacles, since he's bioluminescent, it's almost like, you know, his his you know random little growths and stuff on him would be bioluminescent too which doesn't make sense biologically but uh it's a fun thing to put in a little fantasy concept so a little tip uh kind of how, how i do this in my process is i'll uh use the pen tool and just kind of block out really jagged um an outline of it and then make a selection out of that and then just block in the main color. Now, I always start really dark uh, and then build up from there, build up the values from there. So yeah, it's like almost black uh, when I block this in and then I'll create a clipping mask above it to, to sort of start shading in the characters, uh, start lightening them up uh, to work on the highlights. And one of the most important things uh, when I paint is is making sure that the lighting makes sense. And I, I love messing around with lighting because I I um, I'm studying film in film school right now. And on my own uh, little projects that I'll do, uh, I really like using like just messing around with whole different types of uh, lighting. And there's nothing crazy going on in this. This is really just one light source. It's not. Uh, anything crazy but I always just like to make sure that it it stays consistent so he's right now he's lit from the top front kind of uh, if you can tell almost like the light is right above him because you can see shadows under his chin uh, and it's the the light is the most intense right on top of his head there um, but then there's a little shadow under his uh, little light thing I don't even know what it's called hanging off of his head um, 
But yeah, and just making sure that the light under his chest, there's a little bit of a shadow under his chest, and then under onto his his stomach in the middle of his torso. Just making sure you keep it consistent. And it's also good to try to smatter on uh, a variety of different colors, but like very subtly. So I, uh, instead of just keeping this character as the kind of greenish, grayish blue that he is, I'll go over and uh, add gold tints, like just kind of to vary up the colors, all the little spots of red uh to kind of add a tiny bit of warmth and then it'll make little purple patches and so when you when you look in the at the character like when you actually end up selecting it color by color it you know ranges from green to gold to blue to purple to pink to yellow uh oranges there's there's a lot more going on but if it's subtle enough then it all blends in to make something that looks just a bit more real like it's a bit more of a a weathered kind of like his skin is weathered maybe it's a little dirty or maybe there's little patches where you can like see through his skin to his veins and you can see the little um red blood kind of going around actually you don't know if uh anglerfish have have red blood that'd be interesting uh I mean, they probably do, right? Maybe I should Google stuff before I actually, like, you know, talk about it so I don't sound like an idiot, but... Ah, uh, here we are. Uh, so now, after I've, I've blocked in most of the colors, I'll go through on the outline of the character. To, I'll take the sketch of the character and kind of repaint that into the painted layer to then work off of uh, and start slowly adding in details everywhere. Uh, and I, I really focused on the face for this this character. This guy's face um, took the most time because I wanted to make sure it was so, as textured and kind of detailed and tangible as possible. And also it's because it's the main focal point. When you look at it, uh, it leads to the face. There's high contrast in the face. You know, his mouth is pitch black, whereas his his eyes, the, the whites of his eye or like the shine in his eyes is very close to, to pure white. Um, so yeah, high contrast right in the center of the image. It's it's what you look at first when you see it. What, what kind of naturally draws your eye first. I try to add a bit of uh, red on his gums, uh, like where it connects to the teeth. And also like maybe it's like stained with blood over the years. So it's, it's got a pinkish red, uh, yellow tint. I mean, because he doesn't have a dentist or anything, obviously. So his, his teeth are not going to be white. I always think it's very important to uh, also nail the little highlights on the on the eyes. Make multiple little uh, dots of, of white uh, and then maybe little rings of how the light would kind of reflect out of the eyes because it really makes them pop when they kind of shimmer uh, like, the, like the lights hitting off of them. Like any type of character that I do, I always try to make sure to do that with the eyes. Here's where I'm adding little highlights to the the barnacles to make them actually look like bioluminescent kind of barnacles. Actually, <laughs> when I, I put a little red wash over it to try to uh, warm it up a little bit and add a bit more like variation to the texture, <laughs> ended up kind of looking a lot like spaghettios. Um, if you've ever eaten a can, or you know, at least you probably know what a can of spaghettios looks like, but it's pretty much just spaghettios spilled on his shoulder, and now I can't unsee it. Um, Surprised I didn't kind of change it up, but I, it just doesn't look bad. But <laughs> it just it makes me think of SpaghettiOs. Again, just kind of combing through the painting part by part to flesh out little details. Um, a kind of interesting thing about uh, this kind of style of painting is that uh, if I finished it, if 
I finished the painting about an hour ago, like about an hour before this point of painting, I still would have been pretty, uh, pretty satisfied with it because all the colors are, are blocked out, uh, correctly. Um, and I spent a lot of time on the sketch. Like the, I felt most inspired when I finished the sketch because that's where it, that's where it starts. You know, you don't get much more of like a new kind of like, whoa, this, this looks really cool. Um, you don't really get that, that moment more times than when you finish the sketch and when you finish blocking out the main colors and kind of get it to, to look right. Um, so all this is just me adding detail for the sake of, you know, making it look cooler. Uh, now I'm going in, kind of resizing it, changing up the background, uh, perspective and everything. I decided to add this giant fish hook type weapon to him, which I thought looked dope. Um, I actually had the idea to add like some kind of Hawaiian Polynesian tattoos on him. Um, maybe I will if I like do another iteration of this character, but, uh, yeah, I, I just, it skipped my mind to end up doing that when I finish it off, but maybe I'll do that in the future. And, uh, whenever I kind of think of the composition of a character, uh, it's always important to, or like the composition of the overall piece, uh, I'll like to zoom out a lot, uh, try to add some things, add some subtle interest. So I'm adding some things in the foreground, uh, that I'm going to end up kind of blurring, um, to look like it's, I don't know, it's like you're kind of, like it's a dark voyeur shot, if you know what that is. It looks like you're like creeping on him or like you're hiding from him uh, and you're looking through some debris. Uh, and then I wanted to change the background to be this kind of sickly green haze. So if you have ever played the game Bloodborne, uh, the DLC for Bloodborne was is like my favorite area of the game. It's called the Fishing Hamlet. Uh, and it's a very similar kind of vibe to this. It's like this really dark, gloomy, uh, old, ruined fishing village. Um, and there's like a bunch of weird celestial like fish creatures and fish men and these giant shark, giant men like things. Uh, and I kind of wanted to nail the vibe of that sort of atmosphere that is in the fishing hamlet in this one uh, picture. And it just came down to simply uh, nailing the colors of the background right and adding enough fog and gloom so I, I messed around with that a lot and you saw that I I put a photo of clouds in but then I I brought down the opacity and set the uh, multiply set it to multiply so that or actually I might have set it to lighten or screen or something uh, I can't remember but set it down so light that you can barely see it just adds a little bit of texture into into the background I also sketched in some ropes kind of coming from the end of the fish hook that's like wrapping around his whole body, like around his waist and then over his shoulder. So now I'm here, I'm just going in because obviously the, the shape of the hand has to change. Um, so I messed around, now this is actually where it gets harder for me to draw hands is uh, drawing them in like a, a position that makes sense. So I, I mess around with this a lot to try to get it right. Um, and then I end up resizing it afterwards as well and color it back in. Just kind of go through the same process that I did for the entire, uh, the rest of the painting, just kind of over again. So now here's a little bit more than Bloodborne influence. I tried to add a couple lanterns, Bloodborne style lanterns right in the foreground. Uh, I was gonna color them in to be like pure black and then blur them. Um, and I was gonna add a little bit of light coming off the lanterns like they were glowing, but then it, I decided that it took away from the, the focal point. Um, it kind of drew your eyes right to the lantern first since they're so bright against a pure black kind of silhouette of the lantern so I decided to leave them off basically and you can't even really tell that they're lanterns once they're blurred at a Gaussian blur effect over them um, as if they're like right up in your grill so they're they're defocused from your vision as if you're focused right on the on the fish man
All right, go back through, uh, add some finishing touches, finish some of the rendering, uh, little shadows that I missed, uh, touch up some of the highlights, uh, especially on the little uh, kind of webbing that uh, goes across his, his torso, uh, render out uh, his new hand. Uh, and then I actually, I leave the fish hook fairly unrendered just because it, it doesn't need it. Like the, the kind of, it's not really directly in the light or really in the center of the screen and it, uh, the fog kind of covers up any detail, any detail that would be there. So I just decided to leave it uh, fairly unrendered. It's just kind of a block of color with, uh, you know, a little bit of texture variation and that's, that's pretty much it and it, it looks fine. So sometimes there are little uh, spots when you're painting that you really don't need to go into detail or waste time over um, if they're not as important. I kind of color dodge up the background a little uh, as if there's some kind of glowing a slight glow coming through the haze uh, add some final color adjustment layers to really make the colors kind of pop in just the right way and then I'm basically done um, so yeah here's the here's the final product and here's it compared to the original old drawing some I'm very satisfied with how this come out. I think it's it's really fun um, to go back and try to recreate your old artwork like this because um, if you're ever running out of inspiration, uh, it's always kind of nice to, to fall back on something that you're really good at. For example, like I'm not very good at landscape painting. So I was working a lot on trying to uh, work on my landscapes, but I wasn't making anything that I really uh, admired, that I really liked when I finished it. So when I when I finish them, um, I I just feel like I've, I haven't made anything that I that I liked, uh, and I wanted to go back to making characters, something that I am really good at, that I really enjoy doing, that feels really fulfilling. So it's 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 nice kind of balance because I, while I was getting better at doing landscapes, it's it's nice to you want to make sure that you're always giving yourself uh, stuff to 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 make you proud of yourself you know do a little bit for you and then a little bit for growth when you're growing as an artist so uh yeah i'll probably be doing more of these recreating because i have so many old drawings um but i hope you learned something out of this and uh that's it peace